Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the last presentation of the day, the KDLP Kernel Development Learning Pipeline. Uh, my name is Rado Verbowski, and I work at Red Hat as uh, one of the kernel uh, maintainers. I make sure the uh, customers are getting fresh, baked new kernels every new release. Um, before I Come, uh, before I start with the main presentation, I would like to tell you uh, a small story. Uh, it's a story about an aspire, aspiring game developer. It's a throwback Thursday. As you can see from the photos, we are talking about, photo, we are talking about late, late 90s. Um, that's me sitting uh, behind my uncle's Amiga computer. I taught myself how to code. I learned Pascal and basic and C language. And I thought I could solve every problem with my engineering skills. And I also fell in love with a game. Um, you probably know that game. <laughs> I spent many hours playing that game. And not because just playing that game, but also trying to exploit the game in my advantage. Uh, trying to extract various data files and putting my own data inside the game, creating new levels and you know, just having fun. And I still love the game. I still play it from time to time. It runs on everything, on my mobile phones, on toasters. It's, it's written like a great operating <laughs> system. Um, so later, uh, when I joined the un university, I was very pleased that they have released the source code to the game. So I went to the uh, FTP server. <coughs> I downloaded the uh, zip file with the source code. I un unpacked it. And I tried to read it. And it was, I could read the source code. I mean, I could, I, I knew C language, but it was just gibberish to me. I opened a text file, I could read the functions, but all the data structures, they didn't ring a bell. I mean, I couldn't discover how those individual puzzle pieces would come together as a great game that I loved so much. Um, so after a while, I just simply gave up. There was no, simple help for me. There was no one to talk to. There was no one to ask for help to understand what's really going on inside the source code. Um, so before I continue, I would like to know how many actual students are here because it, you mostly seem like engineers. That, <laughs> like one-fifth perhaps of the whole room, okay. So how many Kernel developers are here. Raise your hand, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> so from the students group, how many of you are actually using Linux as your daily workstation? Okay. And how many of you are compiling your own kernel? <laughs> okay. Um, have you posted any patches to the upstream or created patches by yourself? Uh, I know, colleague, yes. Um, from the students, how many from the students do you think your teacher has ever compiled a kernel? <laughs> <laughs> One person for the whole classroom, okay. Um, so what actually is... Uh, KDLP. Uh, it's a program, um, the Kernel Development Learning Pipeline. It's, it's a project that is sponsored by Red Hat. And it's a, it's a course for students that can learn about kernel development. And it's for a course, uh, it's for a credit, so there's some motivation behind the course. And also it's an opportunity for you to become a kernel developer um, with the uh, approach of, for example, large language models there's a possibility that the kernel will still be a domain where uh, machine learning will be kind of, um, will, you know, uh, machine learning will still be not be able to write device drivers for, for, for new devices. And also, uh, uh, if you are really interested and you pass the course, you can apply for an internship at Red Hat. Um, the course was, Originally, originally started by Joel Savitz and Charlie uh, Mirabel. Um, they are both Red Hat employees. 
and uh, they were both, both interns. Uh, I think at least Joel was uh, at Red Hat, and they wanted to approach more students and teach them and join them Red Hat. Uh, it has been incrementally improved on the feedback of students. It's running for more than uh, three years now, and it's expanding to other areas uh, around the world. The latest one is uh, Israel. Um, the course is being taught by Joel through a Zoom conference. Um, but this course will be taught by me and uh, three or four other people, uh, three people uh, that are sitting there. That's Carlos and Isabella. Hey, guys. Um, and uh, Vratislav. And this course will be a bit different. This course will be... Uh, um, Applied to the uh, Czech system, uh, we couldn't really fit the uh, U.S. course into the constraints that we have with the, with the uh, Czech university. Um, so if you are interested in kernel development, we, we can give you a hand if uh, you, are you have the same challenges as I had with the uh, Doom source code. I'm not a game developer, so you can see I failed in my, uh, in my goal to uh, be a game developer. Um, we can help you to overcome the initial gap between the kernel source code because when you download it, it's just a huge tarball of files and you don't really know where to look for help. And documentation, there's sometimes no documentation in kernel development or it's behind the code development. So you have to reach out to the community itself to its tribal knowledge. and the kernel development uh, kernel community is kind of known for its specific ways of handling stuff. Um, and sometimes the universities don't really teach you what the uh, companies want. So we as experienced, experienced developers who are working in the industry are giving you the opportunity to fill that gap really early on. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a course specifically for the Masaryk University. Um, the uh, bonus is that you get three credits. It's a full uh, semester, so 12 lectures, and it's starting this September. Um, it's an open source course for those who do not uh, attend Masaryk University or not students anymore. Uh, you can download all the resources, either from the previous runs from the course or from our one because we will uh, publish all the uh, slides and all the materials uh, on the uh, project's website. I wanted to play a video um, <laughs> from students that have passed the course in the US, um, but I was told um, there will be no audio for the, for the uh, video here, so we will uh, skip that video. And um, for the, uh, oh, okay, I was, let me, sorry, let me skip that. And that's it. That's, um, I would like to ask um, if you have any questions. And uh, for the uh, kernel developers who are doing actual kernel work, I would like to know your stories, how you got into the kernel development. Yes, there's one question. The question is a specific power management ACPI S3 question. <laughs> How should specific device should be handled? Um, <laughs> I think that's a great question, by the way, because uh, 
related to the course in a way. For example, power management right now in Red Hat is done by a specific person. Many of the current developers have started doing Unix in the 70s and 80s, and they switched to, to Linux. And as I said, the um, most of the information is hidden inside the tribal knowledge. And all these people are getting old, are getting retired. So if there are no new people coming to the kernel, it will be more difficult for, for the young people to understand what's really behind the technology. And for a specific S3 um, question, I, I sorry, I, I, I forgot the specifics about the question. You can, you can, we, we can properly talk later and you can explain to me what would you really want. Uh, but yes, another question. Uh, we haven't decided on the license yet. Uh, yet. Uh, I would have to check uh, under what license the previous course is uh, released. Uh, and for the question regarding uh, partnership, we are definitely open to work with other universities and regarding uh, organizations or companies. That's probably a question to uh, uh, Martin, who is sitting there. The answer is that there is already a cooperation with the Linux Foundation. Yes, the, the gentleman. This is the first time the course will run in Czech Republic. In the US, it's running in, since 2021, I think. And uh, we haven't collected that kind of data, like how many active people are there in the kernel community. But there, thank you, that's an interesting point. We might get a look in, uh, onto that. Uh, posting a patch to upstream is kind of complicated. It doesn't really show you the, uh, it, I, who knows if it's a real, you know, a metric on how successful the course is. I mean, if, if you are a, a kernel engineer in a Red Hat, you, your, your name might not never be upstream because you're doing internal backboard stuff. So as long as you are working in the kernel, I think that's a success. Yes, please. The exact roadmap is still in flux, so I do not want to really say anything specific, but you definitely will learn the whole uh, process, how to set up a build environment, how to um, compile the kernel, how to format patches so that it will be accepted by the uh, upstream community, and we will show you a basic introduction to subsystems that are you know, necessary to work inside the kernel. That's what I'd like to try to avoid because it's still, you know, we, we, we have restructured the course, for example, yesterday because we onboarded another person who has come with new insights and uh, yeah. uh, the gentleman in the white. I don't think this session, so the question is if you are considering recording the sessions, uh, I don't think we will do, as I understood. US team does, 
So you can watch those recorded session, uh, I think on YouTube. Uh, but I don't think we will record those, so those sessions for the Masaryk University. I cannot say. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, the Masaryk University works in a different way. Students can uh, join whatever course they like, and if they think it's over their uh, level of knowledge, they can cancel that course within two weeks. Yes? Okay, so the guess is how, uh, how many participants will be there. Um, depends on the size of the, um, uh, of the room. I think there are 20 seats available. And uh, how many students will be left after the first two <laughs> lessons? <laughs> uh, no, there are, I don't think there was a questionnaire about how many students would like to join that course. There was no uh, market. Uh, okay. So the question is why the course is available only for uh, MU, not for Visoke uh, Uchenyi. Uh, um, that's probably a question more for uh, uh, Martin Ukrop. Process complexity. Yeah, uh, it shares a lot of free places because Masaryk University students are uninterested. Uh, you can come probably and be there, though we can't guarantee that you will be able to take a train to the place. I kind of presume that most of the students in the room are PhD The question is if there will be a practical stuff. Uh, yes, there will be assignments. I do not want to tell you what assignments if you are, <laughs> if you do, if you want to attend that course. Uh, but yes, there will be assignments. So once they are given, they will be available online, right? Once uh, the question is if the assignments will be online. Yes, they will be also online. You can you can check the uh, U.S. course; they have their assignments online. Yes, please. Are there plans to teach this course in other universities? Um, I think yes, generally yes. Red Hat would love to approach more students, find more current developers. It's about if those universities uh, are approachable and if there are resources for that. Do you have any specific university in mind? Also. University in Turing. Okay. Do you actually plan to force students to have the homework via, via 
the qu course. The question is if we are first going to force students submit work by patches and email, and the answer is totally yes. It's part of the kernel development. It's how the kernel community drives its work. So yes, you will get the full experience. <laughs> Uh, GitLab, uh, the question is about GitLab. No, we'll not use GitLab. <laughs> if, 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 are there, there are subsystems that use GitLab. Okay. I have a question for the students, like what part of the kernel or which, which might be, what you would like to see on, on that course as a student? What would you like to learn? What would you like to take away from the course? <laughs> Memory management. Okay, yes? So how the code is structured and how the subsystems interact with each other. So a general overview of the kernel source code. Yes. Getting getting into the kernel source code is kind of scary. It's full of specific macros and helpers and different compiler options inside the code. You don't really understand what they are doing. And even if you find the definition of the code, definition of something, you will later find it's not being used because there's a huge if def some somewhere hidden in the layer of definitions. So yes, it's it's not easy. There is a suggestion of an RCU, if you are interested to explain it no, to no, us how no, it works. No, 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 I, I work mostly downstream, which means I go to the patches posted by our uh, engineers. I do not work directly with upstream. Um, and our maintainers are usually, or our developers are usually good at you know, doing their job properly. And we have, now we have tons of automation, which take a look at all these quirks and wrong sign of messages and formatting stuff. Yes, that it will be interesting to to see all these emails pop up after like two seconds before the deadlines. Everyone <laughs> submitting <laughs> submitting their their work, and now we have hundreds of files to go through for twenty students, <laughs> and we have to come up with a rating for each of them until the uh, course deadline. Work correctly on the, the code. I mean, you get something by email, and 
they are probably going to implement this rule here. Do you expect to be correcting that rule with more speed or actually continuing the status quo and normal real thing that you start with the real thing that you get? So the question is if there will be some automation used on the students or on their submitted homework. Um, we haven't discussed it yet, but I know that US team is doing that work and they have an automation every time the students send patches and I think they also uh, send them through email. Uh, there's an automation that applies the patches to the kernel, compiles them, and after they are successfully compiled, someone from, from the uh, teacher team comes and reads the homework because it doesn't make sense to read a, a code which you know, doesn't even compile. Yes? Yes, the, what are the prerequisite, prerequisites for the course? Uh, it's English language. Not all of us are native Czech speakers or Slovak speakers. Uh, your own laptop, a basic understanding of C. What was there? Um, Linux, of course, installed somewhere. Yes, kernel. Some, something that you can compile your kernel on. From the hardware perspective, uh, x86 architecture would be helpful. If you are have uh, an Apple ARM or a different RISC machine, you probably won't get this much fun. Yes. So there will be, yes, I, I will be teaching the x86 architecture. There will be a huge lore dump with all the niches of the x86 architecture right at the beginning. So you don't have to worry that you haven't grown up in the 80s. Yes, rest of the uh, rest of the lecture should be architecture uh, independent, but you will get a presentation about the x86 specifics. Yes. The question is if you are going to use a service for students to use for build their kernels, and the answer is no. The students will build their own kernels on their own machines. Thank you very much.